evening, everyone. It is 6.30. Welcome to the Tuesday, July 5th, 2022 Planning Commission meeting. Would you please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it is, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Tuckfield, would you please call the roll? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Oliver. Yeah. Mr. Smith. Here. Mr. Bentley. Mr. Bentley is here. Yes, excuse the absence. Okay. Mr. Hardy. Here. Mr. Tuckfield is present. Mr. Spadafora. Here. Mr. Meyer. And Mr. Meyer really has an excused absence as well. Okay. We have a quorum of five. Mr. Chairman. I'll make a motion to excuse Secretary Bentley and member of the fire league from this evening. Okay. I'll call votes. And I'll second. Well, supported by Mrs. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. All right. Um, approval of previous meeting minutes. Is there any discussion? There's no uh, discussion. Then I'll make the motion to approve the previous board meeting minutes. Okay. Second. Mrs. Smith, make the motion. Mr. Spadafora, seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion passes. Approval of agenda for tonight. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, if there's no deletions or corrections to the, the uh, agenda, I'm going to assume we approve it. Support. Okay. Mr. Oliver made the motion, and Mrs. Smith supported. All in favor, everyone? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, old business, Mr. Box. There's no old business this evening. Okay, moving on to new business and public hearings. Let's we'll start with the first one. Rezoning request from residential one family urban R1 to residential multifamily low density R2L Golden Creek. Earlier parcel 08162000070. Located on the south side of 24 Mile, quarter mile west of Foss, section 16, Salvatore de Murcio. Just Mr. Box. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Uh, as you mentioned, the property is located on the south side of 24 Mile, uh, next to kind of sandwiched between where Future Broughton will go and uh, the landfill property. Um, the applicant does intend to develop the site as a low-rise multifamily residential development. Uh, single-family residents, if you look on the screen, you know, there's a couple of single-family residents that exist, one on the property and one immediately adjacent to the property. Uh, as I mentioned, it is close. This is the landfill down here. Uh, the property to the south is currently zoned agricultural, but it is master planned for residential. The property to the west is currently vacant. Uh, but we are working with the developer on that property uh, to be developed as residential. Uh, and those two properties are separated by the drain currently. So the property in question, uh, again, they are seeking uh, multifamily uh, low density, which would be up to six units per acre. Uh, it is master plan for, for the six dwelling units an acre. Um, and again, we wanna note that it is next to the landfill. Uh, the residential property, one of the other properties just north of the landfill here is currently under construction. If you've been down 24 mile, I'm sure you've seen a lot of that. That is also a multifamily uh, development. Uh, and, and they that development that's currently under construction uh, did their best to keep the development away from the landfill as far as possible. Uh, and I'll defer to Mr. Thompson and Mr. Deacon Carrier over here, but I think that's somewhat of their intent as well to, to, to try to put the units closer to, to 24 mile road. To, to keep the residents as far away as possible from the landfill. Um, that being said, uh, it, it is master planned for what they are seeking. Uh, so it does align with the future land use plan. Uh, and therefore, staff is recommending uh, approval of this rezoning. Okay. Mr. Box, is this a condominium community? Is this what we're looking at? Uh, it could be developed in a number of ways. That, that's not really determined yet. Okay, just one. All right. Mr. Thompson, please state your name. My name is Bill Thompson. 
from Cedar Peace Manor, address is 17001 Mile Road, Suite 3, Clinton County. Uh, this subject was, uh, this, the site was in front of you about a year ago. It was subject of a uh, uh, consent rezoning or conditional rezoning. Um, ran into some stains on it. Uh, the project is that we are contemplating, the owners contemplating is very similar to that, but there's going to be changes made because of changes in the county engineering standards. Um, we do plan on isolating ourselves at least a little bit from the landfill. Um, probably keep 100, 150 feet away from the landfill with any, with any development. Um, there'll be, there's a gas main that's through right about below where the subject site is, and they're cussing across at about a 45 degree angle. Uh, so there'll be two detention pilots, one on the north end and the south end. Uh, Stanley Ferry Sewer actually runs along its easterly boundary. Uh, we have to carry it to our west property line. Uh, we will carry it to the bank of the drain, or very near the bank of the drain, and set money aside for a car after the drain crossing. And then uh, the next door neighbor is going to have to pay his staff and carry it across the drain. Uh, water may exist on the north side of 24 mile road. Uh, we'll have to connect to that twice uh, to create a circuit unless we can connect to somebody else. Um, other than that, that's what the proposal is going to be. And for the site is master plan for this use. Okay. Commissioners, questions, comments? Hey, quick question. Yeah. Roughly, how much that property will not be used in percentages? Percentages? Mm -hmm. Probably 10. 10% won't be used? Yeah, probably. I'm just looking at the drawing. Half of the east side, or half of the, of the south end, is uh, next to landfill. And you can maybe a quarter of that's going to be buffered. So maybe more than 10%. Of course, the detection base and then the open space around the detection base. So it might be more than that. Are you can keep these single, but uh, not single level. Yeah, single level or yeah, they're proposed as one story. One story. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oliver. Anyone else? This might be directed to you, um, Josh, but to the extent the master plan was being developed, the master plan that was adopted, uh, was there any discussion, research, or anything like that to the extent? Uh, the zoning and the future land use of zoning was taking effect with the landfill in proximity. As you know, that's correct. Uh, the previous master plan, I believe, had this as single family uh, zoning for the master plan uh, or land use, excuse me, single family land use as the master plan. Uh, we did change that uh, based on a couple of factors the fact that next door is multifamily already being developed uh, and the fact that they do have the landfill. Uh, to try to keep some of those units away from the landfill, it would be more viable for development uh, to, to keep those units, you know, multifamily units, but keep them away. So, in order to make it viable, we felt that it would need to be multifamily. If you know, has there been any type of recent remediation or anything below the surface? Like that landfill's been there an awful long time. It had a past history going back to my first time I served here in the township a long time ago. And I'm just curious if there's any other activity and any type of environmental concerns um, where each state might be going to the north, the south, or the, or the west. Yeah, there, if you go out there, there's a lot of monitoring wells all over on the site as well as on adjacent sites. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, even the property that, that the township is in the process of selling at 24 and Foss, which is across the road, even has a monitoring well there. Um, so it, it is being monitored. Uh, I, I don't know that the property next door is currently being developed. I'm sure they had to go uh, through the state <coughs> regulations, which I'm sure required a lot of testing. Um, I know one of the, the kind of hot button uh, Topics now is PFAS, and I know they changed their standards for that, um, and that actually did affect this site in some areas. So certainly they're going to have to do, get some testing done on 
you know, and make it through the state level. <clears throat> so when Mr. D. Mercurial comes in for a site plan, then that would have to go for that and any other adjacent property owner to any extent, any of those things are still not uh, coming with a site plan for development. Well, they could come in with the site plan, but I think the, the engineering phase uh, is where they're going to be required to do a lot of that testing. Okay. All right. Thank you. Just, just a little follow up. The question is for the public and whoever wants to listen. The bank, and I think it was the late 90s, there was quite a intense uh, leachate collection. It was litigated and throughout the litigation. That was formed in the leachate uh, collects in various spots. It goes to a central building, gets uh, they apply whatever they apply to it, then goes into the storm. So there was quite a bit of work on holding that leachate there. So it is being collected. And it's uh, to my knowledge, I haven't heard of any downstream. Uh, Lee Jay getting out. It seems like that collection system is doing what it was supposed to do when it was designed back in the late 90s. So this has been information. Which would continue to be important going forward for the public health, safety, welfare like that. I mean, it's been, like you said, Charlie, it's been a, a long time. Yeah. That's an issue that's still, you know, I'm sure the development will have sure, to do their testing. And then residents that, resident said that Buy that property, sure they're gonna have to know on their deeds that that's a landfill next to what I'm assuming. Um, generally that works that way. Uh, just so there's nobody gets surprised after they buy a house or a condo or whatever they're buying. But there there was quite an intent uh, project there. There was a lot of money spent and it, it uh, seems like it's working because we don't hear much more about it. So they revised that system in the, uh, in, in the late 2010, like 2005 and 2010, because they had some issues that it was not, the company wasn't doing their job. Since that time, it's actually been substantially improved, from what I understand. Have you ever watched the, any? It was not great. In, in like two, 2000, 2006, they were not doing their job, but, it was, but they made a lot of improvements. So that they took care of it. So. Thanks. If I could make an observation, uh, I've lived in that area now for almost 30 years. I drive for a uh, foster a lot. I used to see tankers leaving the landfill. Don't think I seen a tanker in 10 years. So they would collect the, the leachate and ship it out and take it to a treatment facility. And I, don't, I don't think they have to do that anymore. Okay. Does anyone have? It's all leachated out. <laughs> And it's, it's just added that it's been kept quite a bit. There was quite a bit of material put on top. So this little water runs off instead of sitting, going down into the debris and then leaching out through the soil. But so there's, like Ben said, there was a lot of improvement to that. It's, um, it's not even designed like a new one is today. So, but it does work. It's collected enough to leachate. That's it. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Well, then at 645, I'd like to open it to the public. The first rezoning request of the night. Any person wishing to speak will be recognized and will be able to ask, uh, will be asked to give their name and address before speaking. We ask that all speakers limit their comments to four minutes. Once the public portion is closed, we will not recognize any further discussion or comments from the community. Any of your comments will be all the all your comments will be gathered, and our planner, Mr. Box, will answer them at the end. So, is there anyone who would like to come up and speak? I think Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to open it. Oh, and um, I need a motion to open this. Now, uh, hold on, sir. Don't go oh, yeah, no, okay. still <laughs> So, a motion by Mr. Spanafor, seconded by Mr. Oliver. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion passes. Okay, go ahead. Hello, folks. Uh, my name is Ed Press. I live at 516 Silver Bell Drive, just right down the street from the area you're talking about. Um, 
you're going to see me a, a few times because we're going to touch on 23 and card, but this point, I just want to put this out there. That was considered the EPA super site. If you don't know what that is, you better start Googling it. And if that means to put the federal government, because I'm in law enforcement, I, I deal with them. That means that the ground was so contaminated, this township and this state couldn't afford to fix it. From the 80s, people had cancer. I did my research when I moved in Palm Township, and I knew that was an EPA super site. Those little white pipes, vent methane. So there was no explosion. I'm just saying. I appreciate you and your concerns, sir, regarding the health and welfare, because I know if I moved into a place and it is not stated, you live next to a former EPA super site. I don't really want to begin to tell you what I do. That's just food for thought on that. I'll leave it up to you guys to look it up. All right. Did you state your name and address? I don't know if I heard. Yeah, 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 sure. You never? Okay. Do it again for me. That's fine. I live right down the street. Down the street, yeah. Anyone else? Anyone else? When once, Mr. Viper, anything? Okay. All right. Then at 647, I need a motion to close the public hearing. So motion by Mr. Oliver, seconded by Mr. Spadafora. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? No. Motion passes. Mr. Box, did you have any comments or? Uh, well, I was not around in the 80s to uh, to be aware or not if this was an EPA super fun site. Um, but again, th this is a rezoning. This is not, there's no, we're not proposing to build anything right now, just rezone the property. There are stages in the development process, specifically when they go through the engineering phase, where those type of concerns will be addressed. And if, if it is in fact a very dangerous site, then they would not be allowed to build on it. Okay. All right. Anyone would like to make the motion? Recommend rezoning. Anyone? There's no further discussion, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I will uh, move to uh, recommend rezoning from uh, residential one family urban R1 to residential multifamily low density R12 for uh, proposed uh, Golden Creek based on the um, recommendation and the, of, of our planning department and uh, based upon you know, what our zone ordinance is for for the purposes of why we're here for for this agenda item today motion by mr spadaforo Support. supported by mrs smith mr tuckfield would you please call the vote yes mr chairman mr spadaforo yes Ms. smith yes mr hardy yes mr oliver yes mr tuckfield yes Okay, we have a unanimous vote. And again, this is just to rezone the property. Um, the petitioner's got lots of hoops to go through before you can actually build anything. So, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you. All right, rezoning request from Agricultural AG to residential one family urban R1. And agricultural AG Schaefer Development Urban Parcel 08143006, located on the northeast corner of 23 Mile Road in Card, Section 14, Schaefer Development Petitioner. Sir, would you please state your name and address for us, please? Okay, my name is Nick Balberman. I'm with Schaefer Development, and my address is 29800 Middle Belt Road. Uh, Farmington Hills, Michigan, 48334. Okay, thank you. Well, we'll now go to Mr. Fox and then we'll come back to you. I just did it that way. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Um, if possible, I'd actually like to talk about items B and C together. I know they're two separate agenda items. Uh, it's the same developer, same family that owns the property. Uh, so if that's okay, I'm going to go through kind of both of those right now. Letters B and B and C. They're both okay. rezonings. Okay. So I'll go through them separately, but I am going to touch on both of them. So as you mentioned, this is at the corner of 23 and Card. Um, many people in the township are familiar with the old uh, family uh, farm shop there, lots of vegetables and fruits sold there. Uh, so the family is uh, looking to split off a portion of the property that you see there in yellow uh, and, and have that rezone to R1. Um, 
that does match uh, the master plan uh, to do that. Um, residential uses are, are very prominent in this area of the township, um, but the, the hard corner that they're keeping uh, agriculture currently, uh, we do have that portion master plan as commercial. So at some point in the future, uh, it is possible that they could come in and have that portion rezoned to commercial. Uh, in the area, uh, the north of this property is the Township Water and Sewer uh, Department. To the east, the land is currently vacant, uh, but a residential development um, has, has been on the books with the Township for a few years now. Uh, I believe they're still in the engineering phase at this point. Uh, and again, so what you see here is the master plan, uh, commercial and single family. So they are, are matching that, uh, keeping um, the R1 is what they're gonna parcel off. That split has not officially taken place yet, but they're in the process of that, uh, which is why they're here to get that rezoned to R1. Uh, the remaining piece they are seeking to keep as AG at this time. Uh, being that it does match the master plan, staff is recommending approval for this rezoning. The other item we're gonna see, which again is, is just up the road, up Carr Road, it also, only the alternate family, uh, they are looking to get that site rezoned from AG to R1. Uh, and it's the same developer, and I'm sure Mr. Balderman will speak to it as well, um, uh, with the intent to have a single family residential development there. Um, the residents to the west, or the, or the, the property to the west is single family uh, residential, to the south uh, is, is residents as well as the township uh, water and sewer department. Uh, and to the north is property that is currently owned uh, by the township. Again, this, this area is master plan for residential and has been for many, many years, uh, and, and it does match what they're seeking. So um, that being said, staff is also recommending approval of this rezoning request. So you're talking about both <laughs> B and uh, correct. Okay. Sir, do you have anything you'd like to add? I'd simply indicate that um, you know we're expecting a um, an upscale um, uh, for sale community there. Um, the plan uh, the rezoning is consistent with the master plan. Uh, we will certainly work with the township, like we always do, uh, through the engineering and site planning process, and we think that it's going to be a, a lovely addition to the, to the community. Okay. Questions on B or C? I got a question. So each one's going to have its own identity. Right. Just wondering, Mr. Baldwin, Baldwin, good evening. Was there perhaps ever any discussion or entertainment to purchase the eastern portion of the water and sewer property from the township? I'm just curious, or does the township keep uh, the entire parcel? I'm not aware that you know, anybody was seeking that. Only in the sense of both master plan for R1, and you know, I can see a connection if township were to sell it. You got one big community, but I think you, uh, Mr. Oliver's question was answered. It looks like you're going to have just two separate developments with separate uh, communities. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Just maybe a quick answer to that. I think the township needs wants to keep that for expansion possible in the future. Anyone else? Okay. Yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Box, just a verification. Are, are we expected a lot split to happen before this goes before the board? Um, no, um, they have applied for the lot split. They want to confirm that it does get rezoned. Uh, before we finalize. So I think that this would be conditioned. Any recommendation and approval by the board would be conditioned on the loss of that. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Uh, Commissioners, anything else? All right, then I need a motion at 655 to open it to the public. I'm thinking I do B first. Yes. Let me do C. Yes. Okay. So, and this is for. The rezoning request from agricultural to residential one family urban R1 and agricultural AG Schaefer Development, urban parcel 0814300006. So the south end. Is that correct? Okay. So if anybody would like, then it would need the motion first. So go ahead. Motion by Mr. Oliver, seconded by Mrs. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Anyone opposed? Okay, motion passed. So if there's anyone who would like to speak, you heard my spiel before, so come on. Sorry, folks, this is the one I actually came here for. Oh, thank you, uh, Edwin Kress, 515 Civil Go. Thank you. Uh, put the slide back up. You'll see where my house is at right across from the water department. Um, we move, this ain't, I want to stop something. I'm just a resident. I pay attention. I'm independent. And I watch what everyone does. You have a great job, right? We moved here 10 years ago plus because we like the country atmosphere. My whole thing right now is strictly this. How far are you going to take it? How much land are we just going to suck up, put subdivisions in, to where there's no farmland left? Your infrastructure is already taxed. I'm also the president of the Castamar Homeowner Association, right across the street. My street, and excuse me, you know, what I was about to say, has been beat to shit. From the trucks that fixed 23, it would come down the streets, struck the lines four times to where my residents could not get in the neighborhood. We got that fixed, right? But the roads are horrible. It was not like that 10 years ago. They're cracked because all these heavy trucks were working their way around and things like that. Now let's talk about infrastructure. I'm not opposed to this, uh, the ocean economy selling whatever they want to sell. That's great. I'm not here to stop that. It's their property. I'm just here to say is that as a resident, you guys just crammed, and I, I'm not blaming anyone, I'm just saying, uh, a new development at 21 Park. If you're from the township, do you know how shitty that traffic is? And I got a teenage driver, so I, I, I worry about that. If it's hard for me, an extremely experienced driver, to pull out of that damn progress at that rush hour, you just put a development right across the street that's gonna make it worse. That's all, these are these things I'm just pointing out. Take some things in consideration. I don't wanna stifle. I know we wanna grow our township, we wanna do this. We love the atmosphere here, but we wanna turn this into Detroit. I grew up there. One house caught on fire, the rest caught because they were only five feet away from each other. I don't wanna see that happen here. I don't wanna see every piece of farmland sucked up. But again, it's their property. They can do what they want. I'm just saying, that's the charm of this place. You can just drive right on a block in your country's atmosphere. And that's appealing. We, we cannot lose that as a township. That's what makes it a township. Otherwise, let's just change the city. Because that's what it would be if we keep on taxing the shit. Car road is beat the shit. When is that going to get replaced? 22 mile car. From car to hybrid, severely beat the shit. All this development, nothing's getting done. Hopefully, the tax dollars are coming from, you know, the federal government, and we're moving on next. Like I said, I read you Bronco. I see what you guys are doing, and it's great. It's all good work. I love it. But I just want to come. And me and my wife, like, damn man, and uh, you know, and again, I'm not here to oppose you know, ocean X. We we love that farm. I love local business. You know what I mean? I support the local farmer. I'm a little bummed that they're doing it because it's nice to see the wildlife and things like that. Now, what gets taken into consideration with that is you've got wild turkeys uh, that roam that place. I mean, obviously the deer. Uh, we don't want to see them being pushed more into the road and causing more uh, uh, traffic issues. And, 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 and that's another thing. I mean, let's look into the traffic. I can't wait till 23 is finished. It's going to be phenomenal. You guys are putting a park off of donated land off a two-lane squiggly highway where you can't even, how's that gonna work? You can knock down the Waldenberg building and everything else to the one minute. Thank you, appreciate it. But I'm just saying, I was hoping the park was gonna be at the Floss Road. I mean, that's kind of a nice place to play, right? But I appreciate your time. I appreciate everyone. Sorry to rant and rattle, but I just, you know, pay attention to these things. And I thought you guys should know what some of your residents and the associations think. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else <laughs> who would like to talk on the beef? Get that up there, Mr. Box. I promise. Yeah. I did. Okay. Okay. Anyone? Then I will go ahead and ask for a motion at seven o'clock to close the public hearing. Motion, motion. motion by Mr. Oliver. Support. Supported by Mrs. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. 
Um, and uh, public hearing is closed. Do we have any other discussion? Mr. Box, do you have anything you wanted to share? Or? Nothing perfect. So, okay. Just to be clear, we got to make sure that it's conditional to the first one on this lot box. Correct. What was that, Mr. Like the first rezoning must be conditional on the lot split. Yes, if your recommendation is for approval, it must be conditioned on the lot split taking place. Okay. Anybody like to make the motion? Anyone? Chairman, if there's no further discussion, I'll make a motion on a permit parcel 08143000006. And this would be a recommendation to the Board of Trustees to rezone the portion uh, drawn on as the north east uh, portion of the property from agricultural to residential R1 contingent upon a lot split happening that would facilitate that shape being able to be rezoned. And this will be based on uh, consistency with the master plan and recommendations from all appropriate departments. Okay. I'll I'll I will second that. And supported by Mr. Spanifor. Mr. Tuckfield, would you please call? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Tuckfield votes yes. Mr. Spanifor? Yes. Mr. Oliver? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Okay. Motion passes. We're moving on to public hearing for. C, we have a motion at 702. Yeah. Motion by Mr. Smith. Support. Supported by Mr. Tuckfield. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. <clears throat> and this is for the rezoning request from AG to residential one family urban. In other words, the top site there. If there's anyone that would like to speak, please come up. Anyone? <laughs> Diddle to this one. <laughs> <laughs> just diddle. I like that. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay. Then at 703, I need a motion to close the bus hearing. Mm -hmm. Motion by Mr. Oliver. Supported by Mrs. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Uh, anybody <laughs> opposed? Okay. Motion passes. Do we have a recommendation for C? One. Mr. Chairman, if there's no further discussion, I'd like to make a motion with regards to the permit parcel 08143000008, and that would be to recommend to the Board of Trustees that they approve the transfer from AG to R1. This is based upon the subject lot uh, change meeting up with the master plan and approval from all appropriate departments. Okay. Second. And Mr. Fattis, Mr. Fattis, for a second to that. Can you please call the roll call for me, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Tuckfield votes yes. Mr. Spadafora? Yes. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mr. Oliver? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Okay, motion passes. And again, these are rezoning requests. I mean, they haven't even put anything in the ground yet. All right, the next one would be a special land use Tri County Golf Court, Golf, Golf Carts Incorporated, permanent parcel 08184. 54001, located on the north side of 23 Mile Road, a half a mile east of Hayes, Section 18, Joseph Sorrento, Sorrentino, I'm sorry, Mr. Sorrentino, petition. Please you state your name and address, please. Joe Sorrentino, 51073, Milano, Macomb Township. Okay. And now we'll go to Mr. Box. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Uh, the, the property in question, uh, Mr. Sorrentino's uh, Tri County Golf Carts, uh, is just north of 23 on Milano Drive. Uh, you might know the, the car wash there on the corner. There's a building just behind that. And as you can see in the picture, they are the end unit in that building. Um, and so, what he is, is looking for in terms of the special land use is outdoor display for his uh, golf carts. Um, there's a number of categories. Uh, to, to qualify for the special land use. I, I can run through those. I know you've seen them all many times, but um, it, it is appropriate, an appropriate use in, in the area so long as the front yard setback variance is obtained. So they will be in front of the ZBA on Thursday looking for a variance. Typically this uh, outdoor storage or, or outdoor, me, outdoor sales displays wouldn't be allowed in the front yard. That's what they're seeking. Uh, and part of that being there really is nowhere else 
we, we allow commercial businesses in there, but there's nowhere else for them to display them if we do allow that. Uh, so they're seeking to put it in the front yard. Uh, it's not likely to contribute to any more hazardous conditions that are that are in the area. Uh, it's not anticipated that any nuisances would be created as a result of this. Um, we would like them to confirm their hours of, of operation of when they would, would put those out there. Um, you know, from what time in the morning to what time in the evening. I'm assuming they're not going to leave them there overnight. Uh, they might might be gone by the next morning if they did that. Uh, the use is not expected to interfere with or discourage development on adjacent land. It's very built out in that area anyways. Uh, and it's a similar type of use to everything else in the building that, that it's residing in currently. Um, it does relate harmoniously with the area. Again, and it's a built out industrial area with some commercial businesses like this in, in the same building. Um, it will be available for public use and public access and it will have no impact um, from a zoning perspective. Uh, you know, maybe a side or a rear location might be more appropriate, but in this instance, there really is no side or rear location for them to put them at. Um, and as proposed, they're not anticipated to be detrimental or injurious uh, to the area or, or those in the area. Um, again, so long as the front yard setback variance is obtained at, at the ZBA on Thursday. Uh, so staff doesn't really object to this. Uh, again, if approval is granted, uh, it should be conditioned uh, upon the obtainment of the front yard setback variance. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I did have a question, for Mr. Box. So, Mr. Box, typically when we have a special land use, uh, maybe a little bit clear. Is this special land use for outdoor sales display? Is that what I'm talking correct? About? Yeah. And it would distinguish itself. So the special land use is just for outdoor sales display, although they are anticipating for it in the front yard, and then the location being allowed in the front yard would then be the province of whether the variance was approved or not. Is that correct? Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Anyone else? Question of petition. Mr. Oliver. How many units are you going to have out there once? It actually fluctuates. We usually have about three to five units. I use about 400 square feet. I'm heading the south side over there. We rock that area. It's not really a display. I don't have the visibility like you would think. I would much rather park in front of the west side and get the visibility for 23 miles. But when we service these vehicles, we have a small little facility in back as well, about 400 square feet. So we service vehicles. People bring them in. We have nowhere to put these. We've been doing it for nine years over here. For some odd reason, something happened. Maybe somebody complained, which I don't know what happened, but uh, that's why we need that area. Excuse me, that's why we need that area. So you're talking two or three vehicles? Anywhere from about 400 square feet. So each vehicle, you figure six by nine, 54, about 50, 60 square feet, five vehicles, about 300 square feet we're using. You and some of them out there? Pardon me? And prior to tonight, you've already been selling out there? Eight years. I mean, it's really the people to come in, they take them for a ride around the streets and stuff, and they bring them back and we deliver them. Thank you. Thank you. I have I have a question. I, I apologize, and I don't want to be the flying ointment, but this is a condominium. So my question is, if this is a common element, a condominium, um, how does this petitioner have standing to request to put the golf cart in a common area? Do we have a permission? Do we have a letter? He does have an affidavit for ownership from the owner. Okay. And then and it does say that they or they agree with the correct request. Okay. Because I, I didn't see that. I'll look at it. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Um, Mr. Chairman, if I could the petitioner, I think you mentioned this to Mr. Oliver, but I was reading something and I, and I caught the tail end of it. Can you can you just explain to you? So are you parking out there? as extra parking so that uh, potential customers can drive them? Is it, is it visibility? What, what's the purpose of it being? So basically, like I said, we service them. So we have nowhere to put them. So we bring them out in that area. Or we can park them on the west side in a parking spot. So we use utilize both areas. So, so I, you, I do that and park them out there because we're servicing an area. We're servicing cars that are brought in for customers they need service. So when you're, when you're referring to service, what you're saying is that it'd be difficult for you to park it within the building I because, have you're the because you don't have space. Correct. So it's parking in there or parking them in the existing parking spots. Correct. I have no room. We'll have three to four carts sometimes in that little area inside. 
we service some vehicles and make our operation hours between nine and five, but we would never leave anything outside. Never. There's not storage. But you store them inside during the day because you're not actually work or in the evening because you're not actually working. That is correct. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So these golf carts are not for sale, is that correct? They are for sale, yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Mr. Chair, yeah. so they're not, you're selling them or you're fixing them? We have a service department, we have a, le a rental department, we rent them as well, and we also sell them. Okay, so the ones that you want to put up front are the ones you're selling or the ones that need to be fixed? And we're actually ones that are have to be fixed and the ones we sell. And there's about anywhere between three and five out there. That's it from the hours of like nine to five. And these are all new cars, correct? The ones that we sell are the majority of 90% of them are new. Some are used, correct? Okay. But like I said, three to five cars. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Sorrentino, would yes, you continue or uh, Yes, would you continue maybe to store any of your cards or display any of your cards on the store frontage which faces the south, or is it just exclusively um, facing the lot of red? We could put some on the south. The problem we rent, remember I went back, we rent cards out. So we have a 24 foot trailer that we actually keep behind the facility <laughs> that nobody here, they, we all do that. There's a bunch of them, tenants over there do that, they have trailers. So that trailer takes up that space. I cannot put them on that side. They can only go on the south side and the east side. And if I, and if I could interject with this respect, or if you see the picture there behind you, um, the south side is, is the entrance really to the- Correct, the store. The store, the, the only thing that's there is the drive aisle and the sidewalk. If they were displayed on the south side, they would be blocking the sidewalk, which would be an ADA issue. About a 25 or 30 foot store frontage you have there, if that yeah, you probably have, yeah. Yeah. That faces the south where your door of entry door is. Correct. But when the one facing the south and doors, if you look where that blue awning is and that green tri-county sign right there, you have par I'd be very limited on parking spots. So now that actually prior to this meeting, we couldn't park in there any longer. So it's been very difficult to operate. So we've been utilizing our parking spaces. Now our customers can't even park there. So I'm parking on the street, my vehicle, my partner's parking over in a friend's uh, building. And it's just been a pain because we're, we're using now parking spots. Will any of the golf carts at the end of the business day, when you put them back inside, uh, will there be any uh, movement of those golf carts on Milano Drive because uh, during rush hour back and forth, that street gets kind of hectic. Oh, I agree 100%. Yeah, no, it's actually not. You just go right, right down the rocks right there and you pull in the back. That's it. Off of Milano Drive. No, you come right in off the rocks. These things are lifted and everything. They come right down, right off the rocks. Something about right here. Right there. And then you can turn around the corner and pull them in. Doesn't go out into the road. No, no. That's why maybe I didn't state it clearly. I think you just answered it. So you're just going to veer them to the left That's and it. put them in the back. In that the is garage, in correct. The, your uh, your, your uh, entrance in the back, right? That is correct. There's nothing that's left outside except, you know what? I don't know if it's visible here. I don't have my glasses. You may see a trailer in back. Actually, you see it on the, that would be the north side. That's where their long trailer is. We've had no parking anywhere. Anyone else? All right. And at this time, we need a motion to open it to the public at 7.15. So moved. Mr. Spanner, for the motion. Supported by Mrs. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. If anybody would like to talk or speak on the um, special land use for Tri County Golf Clubs, please come up. State your name and address for us. Hi there, please. I'm Marie Kowalski. I am actually the president of the association, Milano, um, Milano West Condo Association. I agree with you about being a fly in the ointment. Mr. Scontino has um, occupied that little space of gravel now for a couple of years. 
but this affidavit that you speak of, I have not seen it. And again, I mean, we've dealt with each other a couple times in the past. Um, I have not personally seen this affidavit that you speak of. You know where he told me from? Yeah. That's my landlord. They won't let you know. You okay. do have a couple of units. Okay. Um, yeah, we do have a couple of units, yes. But the thing is, that is the association's property, which I help maintain. So I'm just curious as to why it wasn't brought to the association's um, attention first before coming to the township so that we could have kind of cleared this up prior to. So that's, I mean, and I'm on behalf of a couple of members, owners of the unit. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fox, I just, I looked in the packet. I don't see an affidavit and ownership in here. Agreed. I looked as well. I, I, they did send one. Uh, I apologize. It was not in your packet. Um, I don't have it right here in front of me either. Uh, but they do have one. And it's, it sounds like, if I'm hearing correctly, this is the owner of the, the unit, not necessarily the owner of the building itself. And, and I, again, this is just from a legal perspective on behalf of the township. I don't see how we have standing to grant these special names or any variance, unless the association signs off on it. That's the issue because if that's a common element, what happens is, is all the units pay for the maintenance and the right to have that for the benefit of all the owners. So I, as a counsel for the, the, the township, I, respectfully, I don't know how we have standing to grant this unless the association has signed off on it. And I'm, I'm not trying to be difficult, but being honest. No, I, I would agree. Yeah, it's not it's his property, it's the association. It was our assumption that that affidavit of ownership was from the owner of the building, not the owner of the unit. Mr. Chair, if I might, maybe yeah. we should take well, this we'll back. Hold on. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? We still have the public portion. Okay, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and close the public portion. 718 with the motion. So Motion by Mr. Oliver, seconded by Mr. or Mrs. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Mrs. Smith, go ahead. Um, Mr. Chair, I recommend that maybe we should table this matter so all parties are able to review mm -hmm. prior to moving that document. Okay. Yeah, I, I think we need to understand really who owns and controls this area, and then we have the appropriate permission to utilize it from. If it's an associate association common element, we need a letter from the association that's permitted. Okay. That's just the bottom line. So the answer is no. We're just both point. Just so you know. I got one question. Go ahead, sir. So basically, I have to get um, like, what do I have to do here? Well, I mean, this is not technically not your your property. It's a property of all the unit owners. So it's it's a it's a vegetation bed that that everyone supposedly pays to maintain, like like the parking lot and everything like that. So I don't know what your by what the bylaws or or the master deed says as to that area. I don't know what the what the plan is that hasn't been presented to us. But we need a presentation and information as to who controls this area. If it's the association and it's a common element, then the association has to sign the affidavit of ownership or some sort of permission for you to do that. Because essentially what you're doing is coming to the association and asking permission to park in an area that you don't know. You, you contribute to it, you're a member of it, but your rights are no greater than anyone else in a condominium. Unfortunately, even though you're right adjacent to there and I see what you're trying to do, you're trying to, to elevate your business and, and I respect that, I'm just telling you, as a township's attorney, I can't advise this planning commission to consider a special land use of this piece of property that we don't that we don't have proof, 100 percent proof that you own and control. Okay. Okay. So basically, if I got the tenants to sign a petition, if they agree, then we could actually go through this again. Well, you have to look. Uh, look, I, I can't give you legal advice, but your master deed and bylaws have have a process as to get voted to vote and approve for certain things. Okay. So. Um, that's an internal issue in your association. Okay, got it. So when we'll, we're done here, you need to talk to that nice young lady back there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just, so, I go ahead. Just, I don't think this is, is what he's doing out, is it, 
it's not proper. It's in violation of our ordinance. Parking them on there currently is in violation of your ordinance. Yes. Okay. I just want to make that I'm stated on the record that. Right now, that's why, it, and as he stated, he's been doing this for a while. It came to our attention. Uh, it, it was brought to, to the planning department. Uh, so we've been working with him to navigate this this process. He's trying to get it in compliance. Is what he's trying to do. Okay. So he can continue parking there. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments from commission? I don't. I think we have a motion. Well, kind of, yeah. So I've asked Mrs. Smith to make that motion. Mr. Chair, I would make oh, a motion to postpone this back. Okay. So, motion to postpone special land use for Tri County Golf Carts Incorporated by Mrs. Smith. I'll second that. Mr. Duffield, would you please call the Yes, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mr. Duffield votes yes. Mr. Stafford? Yes. Mr. Oliver? Yes. Okay, motion passed. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, next item is uh, special land use orange orange theory permitted parcels 08324000019, located on the north side of Hall Road at Mile West of Romeo Plank, section 32, Cindy Ramirez Scout Services Petitioner. Is petitioner in the audience? They do have a representative here. Uh, Cindy is not was not able to attend. Okay, so there's no petitioner for you. They, they do have a representative if we have questions. Okay, well, where is that representative? Come up to the, the podium, and we'll start with you, Mr. Box. Give you a chance to get your sure. Yeah. Uh, so, as you mentioned, the property is on the north side of Hall Road, um, over the west from your plank. Uh, they are looking for a special land use approval for Orange Street located in an existing commercial building. Um, and I'll let the, the petitioner describe it here in a minute, but it, my understanding is it's essentially a uh, exercise um, facility. They run by classes. Not, it's not a anyone can come in at any time membership type situation. They have classes scheduled so they, they can control how many students are there, how many Instructors are there, uh, and, and it's a fitness uh, station based fitness routine. Um, so, much like the last special land use, uh, going through this, the same criteria, it is compatible to commercial business with the other businesses in the plaza. Uh, the applicant was asked to provide uh, information regarding hours of operation. They have since done that, that was in your packet. Um, and, and having that, staff feels more comfortable that they, they will not have a negative impact on traffic or parking within the plaza. Um, no nuisances are, are anticipated. This is an indoor business. Um, the use uh, has no effect on the buildings or structures. Again, it's an indoor uh, classroom type uh, operation. Uh, it will operate and, and relate harmoniously with the, the, the other businesses in the building. Um, the, the building is available and the, the, uh, the uh, business is available for public use. It has no impact on uh, uh, Health or safety, and as proposed, uh, it's not anticipated to be detrimental or injurious uh, to the area. Um, and that being said, staff is recommending approval of this special land use. Okay, sir, would you please state your name and address for me? Yeah, Ethan Thomasley, uh, 31500 Northwestern Highway, Farmington Hills, 48334. Okay. Do you have anything you'd like to add, Mr. Thomasley? Uh, no, I think uh, Josh said it perfect. I'm with the general contractor that builds a lot of these in the area. Um, I second, I think everything Josh said, it's all membership based, uh, sign up based, it's all uh, staff led. Uh, there's no just dropping in and working out. Uh, it's capped at a certain number of participants every class. Okay. Commissioners? Anyone? Yeah. Yes, yeah, this get hours of service. Yeah, it is uh, Monday through Thursday, 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, usually classes between 5 a.m. and about 10, and then they take a break, so it's not real busy from 10 to about 3, and then classes resume from 3 to 7 o'clock usually. Uh, Fridays, it's 5 a.m. to 5.30, and then Saturday and Sunday, it's 7 a.m. to noon. Yeah. Sorry? Three. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, it's 7 a.m. to noon. 
Okay. And Mr. Box, there would be no change to the current uh, side yard setback landscaping of no, the no, residential no. community to the west on Ron and Drive. Is that correct? Correct. There, there's no no changes to the exterior of the building whatsoever. Correct. Thank you. And it's all inside too, correct? Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Any special events which would bring in a lot of people at one given time? Uh, no, I uh, I personally work out there and I've been to these. It's they if you look at the I haven't seen the plans or heard of these, but they're usually 13 stations per location. So it's a max usually of around 25-ish people working out at a time. So what else? Mr. Chairman, I had a question, possibly for the general uh, contractor here. Uh, does this facility have a rear entry? Uh, yes. Do you know if, if, if there's a, a specific entry that's going to be the primary? Do you just pay the front or the rear? Do you front, yep. My only comment would be here that, um, particularly with the evening time traffic, uh, was, uh, the rear parking lot of this plaza stays empty and the front stays very full. This is going to be a pretty full parking lot in that afternoon or evening area. They obviously have enough, uh, have enough uh, space here, but I would recommend pushing people to the back, otherwise the front is going to be very, very busy. You know, with Comcast living there with five guys, uh, it stayed pretty decent at being there. I'm maybe unfortunately found the five guys. Not very well. um, yeah, the, we're taking the space that was the yeah, FNC store. That was Comcast, correct. Right. And that one actually worked relatively well because the traffic was incidental, but sure. Uh, I can see that this one might be a little bit busy in front of people in front of the back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tuckfield. Anyone else? All right. And I need a motion to open it to the public at 728. So moved. Motion by Mr. Spanaflora, seconded by Mrs. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? No. Okay. So if you'd like to come up at 728 and speak on Orange Theory, you may do that now. Uh, Joe Barrick, 45274 Ronan Drive. Um, I'm probably about nine, four more houses down from where that is. Um, the indication of a rear entrance, how would that take place? Would that be adjacent to the coming out from the, uh, the Bubba's 33 next to that? You say rear entrance, where does that take place? Uh, the rear entrance to our suite, so the suite we're on is uh, the far left of this photo here. Uh, the rear entrance is directly at the back of the suite. Okay, right, so it's a it's a it's an ingress egress to the building, not not a road. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Was, I was getting nervous about yes. putting a road in some place where the headlights are going to go directly into the houses. I'm speaking more on behalf of five or six houses that are right in back of it. Yeah, we won't um, be touching. Only really like concern is five o'clock in the morning. Uh, typically, these establishments play a lot of music. And what you don't want to hear is this bass going boom, 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 if you're one of those five or six houses. Yeah, correct. Yes, I can tell you that truth. We can hear the music from Partridge Creek across the road at eight o'clock at night. And, yeah. and, we're, and that's a half a mile away. I, you know. Yeah, so these uh, we perform, we have engineers come in and do sound studies. All the walls are properly insulated. You know, any exterior walls are usually double drywall. Insulated, so we were very cognizant of that issue. Okay, that's okay. That's because I'm glad I have, but just people are the first five or six houses. That area was developed, it used to be nothing but getting back to the old point earlier. That used to be all woods, all the way down from there, all the way through the uh, the Bubbles 33, which was brands and advanced gear and everything like that. So, I'm getting off on a tangent. It's a good thing it's primary property. But we, you know, got my soapbox. We need to be aware of having parks and rec and keeping nature. It's nice to have deer and fox and stuff going, you know, across your backyard. So just, you know, let's try to keep uh, agriculture, but keep the parks and keep it green. But anyway, oh, sorry. Um, that's all I have to have. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else like to speak? And add. 7.30, I need a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Motion by Mr. Spanaflora. Support. Supported by Mrs. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? The public hearing is closed. 
Do we have a motion on the special land use for Orange Series? Mr. Chair, I'll make that motion for special land use Orange Series for commercial number 0870017 located on the east side of Hayes Road, midway between 24 and 25 mile road, section 7, Towering Oaks Investments Petitioner. Hi, how are you? Good evening. Hold on for a minute and we'll go to Mr. Ross. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Uh, as you mentioned, this is along Hayes Road, south of 25 miles, just south of the Beck Elementary School. Mm -hmm. uh, these two parcels are, are owned uh, currently uh, by the, the original family and farm uh, and they are working with a developer to build a single family subdivision on this property. Uh, it, it is, I believe, 118 units and, you know, intended to be done in three phases. Uh, the, the neighborhood directly to the east has a couple of stub streets. They will stub into those streets uh, as well as to the, the neighborhood that's to the south. They will stub that stub street that exists. They will connect into that as well. Uh, and they will have access out to uh, Hayes Road. Uh, all lots do meet the minimum size of width and depth ratio. Uh, and they do have multiple points of connection to the neighboring communities. Uh, they do have the three detention ponds that are proposed. Uh, that will serve the different phases. Um, and they do have a dedicated landscape area along Hayes Road that's required by ordinance. Um, a site entry sign feature is proposed is located within the landscape area outside the corner clearance. Uh, it does meet the setback standards. Uh, and at this time, they have no more outstanding items. Uh, I know they, they submitted, I don't know, two or three times, and, and we had a few comments, and they've revised those. And at this time, we are recommending Okay, petitioner, name and address for you. Yes, certainly. I'm Pete Snyder from Urban Lane Consultants, 8800 Mile Road, Shelby Township, Michigan, 4316, representing Tower and Oaks Investments LLC. I'm the civil engineer uh, for the project. Uh, I really have very little to add. We've been working on uh, actually one point of uh, clarification. The Tower and Oaks Investments has actually purchased the property. They are the owners now. Uh, as I understand. Um, and uh, again, we've been through the rezoning, uh, changed the property lines to fit the phase lines. Uh, that split is, has already occurred and is, is shown and updated here. And right now we're just at the final stage of working through some, uh, basically working through the issues with two drains, two county drains, which cut diagonally across the property, the Eckert to the south, and uh, something called the Howard in the northerly section in phases two and three, which you wouldn't even know it was a county drain because it looks a lot like a very small fine edge. So uh, with that, I am certainly available for any questions you may have. Okay. And we will open it to commissioners. Mr. Spanford. Hello, Mr. Snyder. And um, refresh my recollection from the past, if it was brought up, I don't recall, but you know, this is going to be a site condominium development. Right. And aside from the lim limited common element area for each home or is there any general common elements aside from the intersections off of uh, Hayes Road or the detention ponds perhaps and other areas? Yeah so the the and the unit the unit plan of course is attached as part of the uh, as part of the application. So the county drains are county drain home. Uh, the detention ponds are general common element. You also have the landscape buffer along Hayes Road. Uh, which is a which is a general common element. There's also a little corner up uh, at the extreme northeast where some stuff runs through. There actually sidewalks that that go from the abutting Bayberry subdivision up to Beck Elementary School. Um, that little corner is being preserved. It's all under uh, some sort of a, an easement. There's a 
the original conveyance of the property had had that rectangle really residing with the school. So except for except for getting in there to do to connect a storm sewer that's required, uh, that area is really going to remain the same as you see it right now. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Snyder. Um, also, I was curious about the portion it looks like it might be common area to the south of 35, between 35 and 34, and then also to the south of 62. Is that access for the um, for the corridor, or what is, what is that for? Um, well, there's two things. Really, that's access to get back to the detention pond because engineering requirements require an actual paved, right, you know, paved access back there. And that's a convenient place to put it. That's also where the storm sewer outlet from the detention pond will go over and connect to what used to be the Howard drain over to the east, which is which is actually over in the consumer's energy corridor. So those are just basically they're, they're general common elements uh, for mostly for storm sewer and access to the detention ponds. It, it, so there's a drive that seems to come off of uh, Harbors Drive. Right? There's, there's the corner there. Are you expecting the portions that are not the drive uh, to be ground level? Or are you expecting them to be, to be uh, you know, could we tell from a, from a layman's perspective that it's connected to the drain? Um, yeah, they're going to look, they're going to be grass with landscape plantings. They're gonna, it's not going to, I guess, a pocket park would be the best description I have. But yeah, there's not not no amenities, but a little bit. Right, another, another, yeah, maybe another unimproved pack of our thing is on nature. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Just out of fall, will this be annually maintained or weekly, or will it be maintained at all? The the open spaces? Yeah. Yeah, I think they're going to have to be weekly. Until you get some on the grass, you're going to have to take care of it. Yeah. It, the condominium, again, this is a sub condominium, but the condom association over. It'll control all of that. Same ways you is they're gonna have the man to to maintain the landscaping buff for a long haze. So it'll probably be the same folks. Thank you. Do you, do you have an idea when you start building? Well, the, <laughs> the clients already instructed me to begin with engineering, so <laughs> just as soon as we can. Uh, and with phase one in particular, which is from Howard Drive South. Uh, if you can. Josh, I don't want you to click that. That would be the, on, on the big screen, that would be phase one is the portion on the right, the Eckerd Drain, and then the, the uh, half mile collector road is Howard Drive running, basically, there you go. There's the phase line right there. So everything right with that line, Mr. Box is up on my end. But just as I think they would love to do underground this winter and be ready to pay some time next year. Um, Mr. Box had mentioned that you had, there were some connecting ropes to other subdivisions. But during the construction phase, will there be a construction entrance uh, instead of you know, debilitating our roads even further? Yeah. 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 And the short answer is yes, there will be a construction access road uh, probably just north of the Eckerd Drain, clip in the corner of phase two coming to the back. And that will probably be maintained through all three phases. The idea is to, to build on the right, connect the road, and phase two is actually the section which is at the top of your screen, providing the gas holders to sort of working their way out from the back so that access, and so they're not driving on brand new roads with, with all the construction equipment and house building. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Anyone? All right. At this time, I'd like to have a motion to open it to the public at 740. So moved. Motion by Mr. Spanaporta. Second and by Mrs. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Anybody in the audience that would like to speak, come on up. Please state your name and address, and you have four minutes. Good evening. My name is Scott Baden, and I live at uh, 54107 Ego Drive, which our backyard. The consumer uh, easement is in our backyard. Um, and it looks like we're going to be kind of right on that border of like phase two and phase three. My, my comment is really to the petitioner um, that field right now has been completely unmaintained. I got weeds up to my waist. 
Uh, I have bad allergies. I have to sit in the basement to get any sort of relief. Um, we want to be good neighbors, and so I hope you want to be a good neighbor as well. And so during the construction and all this, we have a number of families with young kids with that backyard all back to that. So please take that into consideration. Please keep that property maintained right now. Please help us. My neighbor who is also here, he mows his grass with a mask, a mask on because of how bad it is currently right now. Um, that's, uh, that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else would like to speak? Good evening. Uh, Michael Kraft, 54029 Ego Drive. Um, just a concern with this new development. What is the township, the county, going to do about Hayes Road? I mean, it's been a disaster for at least 15 years from 23 mile to 25 mile, um, from 25 north to 26 was redone with that bridge with the Austrian Park. What about maintaining the roads that have been treacherous the last 20 years or adding more and more development? What about the roads? <laughs> That's Thank all you. I have to say. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Anyone else? No? Okay. All right, at this time, I'd like to close the public portion at 742 with a motion. So moved. By Mr. Spanaflora. Motion by Mrs. or seconded by Mrs. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. All right. Mr. Box, do you have any comments on especially the Hayes Road? Yeah, that's really the only comment I have is, is the Hayes Road. Again, we're as a township, we don't own the roads, the county owns the roads. Right. Um, they just send us a bill for half of it. So uh, we don't have a whole lot of say in, in what they do and when they do it. Um, I know the Shelby, the folks at Shelby Township have been concerned with Hayes Road as well, as well as the staff here. Um, at this time, I'm not aware of any road projects on Hayes Road. Uh, in, in the next couple of years, but it, it is certainly on everyone's radar. Okay, thank you. All right, commissioners, did you have anything else? All right. Then I'd like to go ahead and make the motion to approve the site condominium subdivision plan, Beck Heritage Farms, Urban Parcel 08071000017. And zero eight zero seven three zero 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 one seven. Support motion by myself and supported by Mr. Tuckfield. Mr. Tuckfield, would you please call the vote? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hardy. Yes. Mr. Tuckfield votes yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Spanafora. Yes. Mr. Oliver. Yes. Motion passes unanimously. All right, we're moving on to zoning ordinance amendment public hearing. The proposed amendment involves Article 4, Section 10.0404A4, Site Limitations. I think that's what it is. Article 5, Section 10.0504A, Site Limitations, Article 6. Section 10.0604A, Site Limitations Article 7, Section 10.0704A1D, and 10.0704A2D, and 10.0704A3D. Tech limitations. Purpose of the text amendments is to meet the state Michigan legislative requirements of allowing maximum lot depth to a width, width ratio of four to one. This box. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Um, so I'm sure Mr. Tuckfield is aware, as, as he's on CPA, one of the most common variance requests we get. Uh, is, is to have a variance to that would violate the ordinance of the three to one ratio. So right now, township ordinance requires that all properties less than 10 acres for all zoning categories 
uh, be not more than three times longer than they are wide. The state of Michigan minimum requirement is four to one. So we are, as a country, allowed to be a little bit more strict, uh, but we're finding again and again uh, that it's really not practical. Uh, a lot of property are, it can be difficult to develop accordingly. Uh, so as we are in the process, as you all know, of rewriting the entire ordinance, this is something that we're, we're going to change most likely in, in all zoning categories. But tonight we are looking simply at the residential categories. Uh, we've got a number of residents who have pending um, variance requests that, that were tabled until the ordinance is updated. And being the, as long as it takes to update the entire ordinance, we wanted to you know, get this one in front of you this evening. Um, another thing I can touch on um, is that, as you mentioned, in fact, here, I, I put it on the screen, I you have this in your packet as well. So all of these different sections, these are the, the lower density residential uh, sections that we're suggesting that we, we change the ordinance. Now, even though we're gonna eventually change the entire ordinance, um, you see how many times it's listed in there. And this is only about four or five zoning categories. Um, every single zoning category has this requirement. <laughs> moving forward, um, it, we're gonna change this process to not specifically state the ratio, but to reference one location. So if we decide in the future that we want to change this to something else, you only change it once, not in every single category. Uh, so tonight we're, we're seeking a recommendation to take to the board. Uh, the board will also, uh, if you guys recommend approval, uh, the board will also have to consider a revised uh, code ordinance that also requires 3 to 1 in order to make this applicable. So that's it. Good. Thank you. Commissioner, anything? Um, Mr. Chairman, I just have one question for Mr. Fox. Um, well, actually, kind of another question. As, as you say, we've seen this. I've, besides maybe pools, this is probably the most common variance I've seen. It's usually hard to rationalize the restriction. So I'm glad, I'm glad we're addressing it. Um, choosing four to one, is that because it was the state? Uh, what the state had? Was there any other thought that we should choose that? Is there a reason that it, Point that we're changing it, should we go bigger? Like, what was, what was the thought of those shoes? So, the we're allowed to be more restrictive, which we were the three to one, but not less, not less restrictive. So, four to one is the max that we can go. Uh, so, anything else we could have, you know, for example, we could have said three and, three and a half, half one or something like that. Uh, but we felt that it was most prudent to just align with the state requirements so there's no confusion. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Anyone else? All right, at this time, I'd like to open it to the public with a motion, 748. Motion by Mr. Spadafora, seconded by Mrs. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Anybody who'd like to speak on this ordinance? Please come on up to the podium. Anyone? Okay, okay 749. At 750, I'd like to close the public portion with a motion. So moved. Motion by Mr. Spadafora. Support. Supported by Mrs. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. All right. Mr. Chair? Sure. Yes, sir. Just a question. They should have asked for this before, but for any, for any pending uh, zone boarding, so ZBA variance requests prior to this uh, ordinance or this revision being enacted, are these going to be tabled or? So the ones that have been requested prior to this have gone to ZBA and have either been approved or denied. Uh, there were a couple of folks who, who chose to withdraw their request for fear that it was going to get denied until the ordinance has changed. So if someone did have, say, a, a three and a half to one ratio and they were seeking a variance previously and it got denied, they would now be allowed to, to create those lots. So, thank you. Uh, for a, Chair, if I could, I don't know the numbers, but we have definitely denied these in the past. Um, and it's, I was going to say it's annoying if not deny them, but there's some where it's easier to see the rationale for them with some of those variances that we deny because when it's what we have to, but very rarely do we actually want to deny them. So thank you, thank you Mr. Chair. Okay. Anybody like to make a motion? 
Actually, I did have one more question. So this would be a recommendation on the proposed amendment to the Board of Trustees? Correct. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if there is no further discussion, I'd like to make a motion to recommend the proposed amendment as stated in our agenda to the Board of Trustees for approval. Okay, motion by Mr. Tuckfield, supported by Mr. Oliver. Please call the vote. Yes, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Tuckfield votes yes. Mr. Oliver? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Harvey? Yes. Mr. Spadafore? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. On to public comments on non-agenda items. Is there anyone here that would like to speak on non-agenda items? If there are, please come up to the podium, state your name and address. Remember, this is non agenda items. Uh, good evening again, Scott Baden, 54107 Ego Drive. Um, my comment is just kind of the overall, kind of touching on, I know what has been on a lot of residents' minds, and if you've heard that a couple of times here tonight, um, and this might have been a better time probably to come during the master planning um, uh, hearings and before that was revised. But it, it seems to me that there lacks just a lot of synergy between the county, the township, Shelby Township, um, Utica, whatnot, that as all this development is going on, we all want to, you know, there's, there's progress. You, you can't stop progress, and I understand that. Um, but when we're looking at, like, the mire that's being built at 24 Mile and Hayes and the subdivisions that are being built, and we have all this construction at 24 Mile, you know, different times of the day, it's backed all the way up from Hayes to, to Romeo Plank and you don't move. And and there, last I knew there was no plan in the next 10 years for the county to do anything for 24 mile or for Hayes. And so it becomes a great contention, I think for us as residents is what's going on with the, the continued development that is not slowing down. Um, and what I also don't want to see is a lot of projects start to kind of stop. And just looking at mortgage rates from a year ago in May with the latest data, right? 2.96 or 2.96 points in May of last year to 5.23 this year, with an so in that, an increase of over two and a quarter. Uh, we've got that inflation that's going crazy, housing prices going crazy. I live in my neighborhood is a 25, 26 year old home. I just have a house sell down the street for me for $496,000. That's great. But as we start these other developments and the prices keep going higher and the mortgages keep going higher, we start these developments. And then when it crashes like it did 15 years ago, then we're gonna have half developed areas and that's going to look terrible for, for our township. And so, we can't stop progress. I just hope that we can be a little bit more selective of what's going on or maybe try and slow down progress a little bit until there can be some synergy and different things that are taken into consideration with the county and how are we going to uh, keep up with the expansion with um, the roads and water and electricity and all that. And uh, that's that's where I'm coming from. It's just a concerned citizen here in the township. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Anyone else? Sorry, it's not agenda. No, I appreciate your time. Uh, Mr. Box, are you the one who plans all this? No, you're, you're talking to the board. Oh, oh okay. I, just, I didn't know what Mr. No, no, no. what Mr. Box did. Yeah. Um, just touching, again, this is not agenda stuff. Just please take into consideration. You guys have all been. Fantastic. I, like I said, I pay attention to what's going on, and that's what you want from your, your citizens of your township to be engaged. Um, Mr. Oliver, are you affiliated with the Oliver, uh, Oliver South Park? I got stock in the company also. But please take into consideration some of the things we're talking about. I know we can't stop that progress, but we need to find that balance. And there is balance. Don't let the greed for the tax dollars come into play. Because I don't want to see what happened. I, you know, we were here when that when the housing market took a dump. And some of those developers didn't want to fulfill their obligations. My subdivision, we got light poles that are just fiberglass poles. Because the, the developer, from what I found out as the president association, did not come in and put those poles in. The ones that are nice cast iron, like every other neighborhood should have, and they paid for the assessment and all that kind of stuff. Huh. Uh, 
uh, can we focus? Uh, is is there is there room? Uh, any plans? Do you guys know of for expansion of Carp Road or anything like that? Because we're putting more development. I, I back up to it, so it's 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 damn near. Uh, it, it, it's a drag fest out there. Every everyone with a fast car lets you know it's fast. So I'm just concerned about that. It, it's, are these things that we're taking into consideration on that? Um, but I, but I appreciate your time. Thank you. My first time being here. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Anyone else who would like to speak? Okay, then let's move on to commissioner comments. Anyone have anything they'd like to share tonight? This is better for them. Um, yes, I, I know the roads issue has been going on for many, many years, and I would say for the past almost probably at least 30 years or so, as this township has grown in population and development with many, many residents who were lifelong Macomb County residents shifting to perhaps the south end of Macomb County to the northern end. Roads, you know, have been an issue previously with the uh, Road Commission of Macomb County, and now it's run by Macomb County Department of Roads. Uh, Hayes Road is a major thoroughfare. Uh, we have a lot of things going on there. We also, that's a road that uh, is shared with another neighboring community uh, throughout our entire stretch. That would be Shelby Township. I know the township has projects scheduled, uh, perhaps with agreement with the county. I guess, Charlie, I'll ask you, sir, if you know if there's any way uh, that Macomb Township and our administrators uh, you know, perhaps in partnership with Shelby Township, talk to communicate with the Cone County Department of Roads, maybe to shift, I don't know about shifting priorities, maybe we cannot do that because current slated scheduled road projects are on major thoroughfares, but Hayes Road is a major thoroughfare. And with this development that is scheduled to go in, uh, I totally agree with our residents. As, as a resident myself who lives near that area, that's that's a bottleneck now. It can only get worse. This is a discussion that it's just been repeated and ongoing probably for the last 20 years. You can perhaps take it even back 30 years. So I appreciate, I think it was Mr. Kraft in the audience who uh, brought that up again. Thank you for that uh, fresh reminder, if you will, a fresh word in due season, but that that's something, gosh, I would like to see uh, you know, this township, who perhaps, I don't know if they were neglected over the years or whatnot, but as the population shift from primarily an agricultural to more of a, uh, a balanced, well-planned out community with residential, agriculture, uh, uh, recreational, uh, commercial and industrial, to balance that all off, we, we've set it. I'd like to see if there's something where we can actually put pen and paper, pony up to the extent that both communities, Shelby and Macomb, with the County Department of Roads, perhaps in their budget somewhere and even in some reserves, do something that is so vitally important, really, to the public health, safety, and welfare of residents in this, not only this township, which we're primarily concerned with, but really most of. Northern Macomb County, which is only shifting and will continue to grow for the foreseeable uh, future. Those are my comments. Okay. And just to follow up on that, yeah. we do have a lot of meetings and Josh knows he's been involved in them. But ever since I've been on the board, starting in 88, this township has always been there for their side of the check, their portion of the money. We've never, ever slow down the project, stop the project, or try to get a detour. Uh, we always welcome any of that development. Um, we're, ben knows he works with that a lot of times in the county. That is a slow moving wheel, it really is. It, yeah. does, it does get done, but it's slow. But in the meantime, all this, these houses, they don't stop being built. So 
I, it's, I, it's a tough situation. I, I just, yeah, I do, I do the road expansions for the county, and uh, I've had multiple conversations with our supervisor. I know that's a priority for him to get a solution for Hayes, and he's been having discussions with Shelby and the county for that. But you know, it comes down to money a lot of times, and you're a, we are a donor county, which means that we pay out more than we get back for Act 51 money, which is the money that goes to to pay the roads. So. It's definitely the queue. They're definitely trying to find funding sources. I know that they were trying to get um, money recently through the recent infrastructure money to prioritize it. It didn't happen, but um, you know, keep trying, and it'll it'll get expanded. It always does. Unfortunately, the, the, the way that it works is a lot of times the progress happens first with the development, and then the road gets paved after. Um, but you know, just I've been doing the road paving expansions in this county since two thousand. We've had Shaner, most of Shaner done, we've had Man Knight done, we've had Ruby North Avenue. I mean, and, and remind everybody that Garfield is going to be connected between 22 and 25. The, the first leg is going to be between 24 and 25, and that's going to be done next year. So that'll help alleviate some of that congestion because the first cars done by the Hayes and, and, and Romeo Clank, and then we can, that Garfield can take some of that on. So it, it, it'll happen. Just, Unfortunately, it takes time. So we'll be yeah. it, it moves. It, it's going to happen. But it, 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 it will happen. And even our county officials have, have said the same thing, how roads are funded when we talk about Act 51. Now we're talking our state legislature involved with that. I mean, these are it's been going on for several, several years. Hayes needs to be expanded between 23 and 25. Everyone knows. And, and they're working it to, to find a solution. Okay. Mr. Duffy? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to add to that. This is just uh, maybe a little different context. Uh, obviously, Mr. Stadfor has um, a lot of history of the township going back years. Uh, Mr. Loyas uh, does a lot of this. Charlie's obviously uh, been around for a lot of these. Uh, my experience has been work, working within the township uh, as an appointee under multiple administrations and observing the interaction between the administration and the county and the state. And one thing I will say, um, I, you know, I've been appointed by multiple administrations. I don't owe one more than the other. I'm a resident like everybody else. Um, this administration seems to have considerably better relations with the state and the county than anybody that I've seen in the past 10 years. And I don't know that that can be properly summed up how valuable it is in making sure that we're not hurting ourselves when we come to the table. You know, I remember, Years ago, in one particular situation, I asked somebody, I was like, this really needs to get done. Everybody knows it needs to get done. Why isn't it going to get done? And the answer was that somebody in the county didn't like someone at the township. It wasn't getting done because of it. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. It's part of it. Um, but it is. And I think, uh, you know, it's, it's a value that we have uh, with the current administration that um, probably isn't always realized. I think another thing that's a value is that uh, Mr. Box has an extraordinarily strong background in, in roads and understanding that what they mean all of those things. So um, I drive on the same roads too. I, I'm at 21 and, and I'm right. I, I wait my turn in line every morning and every evening. I, I certainly feel the, the frustration. Um, and it is a chicken and egg problem. But I, again, my, my perspective is we are in a much better scenario for that than we were four years ago, eight years ago, 10 years ago. Um, and that doesn't make it better when you're sitting in traffic only that I know that we're doing as good as that we can be in that speed and that, in that regard it happens so that's all I have thanks Mr. Chairman okay good anybody else good. all right then let's move on to Macomb Township Board of Trustees latest on an update Mr. Charles on Thank you, Mr. Arnie. A uh, couple things, like always. We uh, hired two more utility workers and one or two apartment. Um, they, were, they were coming off, like say, off the street, but they were uh, new hires, so that's going to be nice. And that department now is totally staffed, which is good. We've been working on, for last year, trying to get it staffed. Right now, it's totally staffed. Um, we hired an accounting clerk for the clerk's department, so that'll be good. That'll help that. And um, the grant writer, Mrs. Rowe, was awarded a 
another year contract. And uh, just for numbers, uh, we pay her roughly 3,000 a month on a retainer for grants. And uh, so far uh, in one year, she's produced $70,000 worth of grants. So that, that again is another slow wheel, but it, it is moving forward. So there's a lot of, looks like there's a lot of nice grants coming up the road, but they are very complicated, time consuming. So and that's about it. It's just about everything is yeah. complicated in the time. It's, yeah. Okay. ZBA liaison, Mr. Duckfield. Uh, Mr. Chair, the only thing I mentioned is we have a uh, agenda for Thursday, um, and we have other things on it. So we will uh, we'll go out of that. And I think the ZBA, you know, we have one of the other ZBA members in the audience. I think we'll, uh, we'll very much appreciate the change on assuming the board of trustees approves it on the uh, width to depth ratio. I think it's something that's needed to be changed for a long time. We're going to see it changed. So that's all I have. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Field. Mr. Box, Planning Department. Uh, just one item that I wanted to point out, uh, our next scheduled meeting two weeks from tonight, uh, we will not uh, not be having, we have no agenda items, we will not be having a meeting. So our next time we meet will be the first scheduled meeting in August. Is that the one where we're going to be next door? The one that's canceled is the one we were oh, going okay. to be next door. Partially why this agenda was so large and uh, a couple items were willing to be pushed back. Uh, so that we didn't have to worry about logistics of being in the other building. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Mr. Oliver. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Then at 807, we are adjourned for the thank you, everyone. That's right. Yeah. <laughs>